Today we will uh, continue with the construct of normality uh, and how it is socially constructed and how we uh, evaluate in a clinical setup who is uh, normal and who is not. We took the example last time of uh, the Hindu Marriage Act and the social practices in terms of uh, polygamy. Uh, so today we would continue with this construct. What we actually uh, we were discussing was that uh, although uh, with uh, this uh, phase of modernity, you know, gradually certain type of practices you find that they are either uh, uh, being uh, phased out or they have slowly started dying out. People uh, uh, trying to follow the same set of pattern. But it is important to note that uh, basically it was the majority's view uh, that prevailed. It wasn't that when this Hindu Marriage Act came into being, such type of uh, practices were not prevalent in certain regions of India. Uh, where we had no seen with the help of this map. But what was important was uh, that uh, certain people who were the stakeholders, who had uh, know the freedom of uh, defining the law, they did define the law in such a way that automatically certain section of the people who were spread throughout the country, okay, uh, their practices could not be fitted into that uh, legal framework. Even though their practices that does not fit into the legal framework, their immediate society accepts the practice. Okay. And that is an interesting dimension. I uh, promised you that uh, at times we would be talking about uh, the legal, the social and the psychological benchmarks. Uh, so here you have a possibility where although the legal framework does not accept certain type of practice. No, the social acceptability of the practice very much exists. Okay. Now, if you look at it from a different viewpoint, that why there was a need for certain norms to be evolved. Okay. Uh, we would be talking about this issue even uh, later on also, uh, that uh, you want to maintain certain degree of harmony. Okay. In the beginning also we talked that adjustment is all about maintaining harmony. Uh, within uh, no certain constructs within you, that would be the intra-individual uh, equilibrium that you, you try to maintain. At the same time, you try to maintain the inter-individual uh, no, uh, issues and therefore you want to minimize conflicts. That is the reason why uh, human beings always thought of evolving norms. But then while evolving a norm, uh, one can realize that uh, the, the majority's viewpoint suddenly uh, became predominant. And then you have certain idealistic concepts, okay. the idealistic concepts which are uh, know, basically you know, later on constituted as the moral principles that should be followed. So faithfulness for example is a moral construct, loyalty for example is a moral construct okay. and therefore when you look in terms of uh, know, a human being's behavior and you analyze in terms of uh, whether this person's behavior fits into the norm or not, whether his behavior or her behavior can be considered to be legally appropriate, socially acceptable and uh, psychologically normal, okay, you find that there could be little bit of deviations. Now if you analyze the norms from the viewpoint okay, um, that we have discussed right now, you would realize that these criteria have come out of certain socially constructed evaluations. No? Society considers loyalty to be important and therefore, therefore uh, whether you are loyal or not becomes very important. If society does not uh, emphasize on socially uh, uh, no relevant constructs like loyalty, then loyalty is not an issue at all. Okay. Uh, you can make a comparison, uh, there are thousands and thousands such examples. Okay, uh, you can take uh, for example, uh, marriage as an institution, the way we have been talking about, we were you know, restricting ourselves to uh, you know, the uh, Hindu Marriage Act that is acceptable in uh, India. But if you make a cross-cultural evaluation, okay, uh, the marriage practices in India and uh, say the marriage practices, uh, take for example in uh, one of the European countries, okay. uh, take the example of Netherlands. Okay. Now in our country, uh, even people who go for uh, divorces, okay, when they apply for a legal divorce, the 
we have something called family courts okay uh, who are supposed to look into such type of disputes and people in the legal fraternity also they would try their best to console you to make you understand uh, that if there is a possibility have some patch up but don't break up okay although the law allows you to do that okay you have certain uh, license to argue on behalf of a client as a practicing lawyer okay or you have the authority invested in you to decide on uh, the fate of certain type of uh, problem that has come in forth of you because you are part of the judicial system okay there there also you know you realize that there is something that has a social uh, value and therefore you convey your clients that fine is it a, is there a possibility you know of uh, you know meeting a marriage counselor okay uh, trying to work out a solution which is uh, you know mutually acceptable to both of you so that divorce doesn't take place okay compare this uh, with uh, you know the whole practice that uh, is currently prevalent in uh, say netherland for example okay where uh, you find that uh, marriage as an institution is weakest in that country and marriage as an institution in our country seems to be extremely stronger okay so it's all about uh, how much of emphasis society lays on a particular type of a practice the contemporary society of netherland doesn't lay so much of uh, emphasis on it therefore it becomes fragile okay uh, in uh, countries like ours no suddenly you know there is too much of uh, value that is uh, uh, provided to this type of an institution and therefore even though with all types of you know uh, hiccups and everything okay the outer skeleton of the institution marriage still uh, remains there okay and therefore uh, you know when you try to inject concepts like faithfulness loyalty you know all these idealistic concepts they very easily you know assimilate in such, uh, systems like ours okay where you realize that uh, this institution has been uh, given utmost uh, importance and then certain idealistic concepts have also been injected into it okay now the moment you see this example and you also realize that there are certain idealistic concepts that has been put forth this means that one way of defining normality could be okay that it is actually a value oriented idealistic concept okay that there are certain things that the society values these are all idealistic concepts because certain people uh, know uh, try to adhere to it and therefore they are called much more normal compared to you that could be another way of looking at uh, normality another way of defining normality now the moment you have certain uh, idealistic concept this once again would mean that the moment you start deviating from the idealistic concept okay then you are evaluated uh, you know as if you fall short on something which is extremely desirable and uh, if you have seen advertisements for certain positions you have eligibility criteria and then you have desirable qualifications have you seen such type of ads now desirable qualification simply means that you may or may not have it but those who will have it will be given uh, no uh, more weightage in terms of selection and therefore what uh, socially you find is that the moment you have the idealistic concept of uh, defining at the normality okay and people who do not uh, come close to it they would be considered to be good or bad so these are all uh, no value oriented judgments okay so good bad better worse okay now these are all uh, no uh, reflection of certain deviations from the idealistic concept but still they do not define you to be normal abnormal or subnormal they simply they simply define you as good or bad okay acceptable or unacceptable okay now here you find two interesting things one that society allows you to deviate from the idealistic concept and it will simply brand you as good or it will uh, tag you to be bad okay even though you show certain degree of deviation uh, society accepts this form of a behavior okay problem only comes uh, when 
the deviation uh, is too uh, too severe or too acute and then it is uh, you know, uh, far more uh, repeated in your behavior when society starts rejecting uh, such type of behavior. What is equally important to see is that certain practitioners of some other faith in the same country, okay, now uh, they are legally allowed to have more than one wife no? in our country. We have talked of the Hindu marriage act, therefore we are now uh, deviating a bit. Uh, but then you realize that even though you have different type of religious practices uh, in the community, uh, largely the focus is on serial monogamy, okay, means you have uh, no uh, divorce, you have the death of the spouse and then you remarry, okay, that has been uh, accepted. This means that at one given point in time, it, uh, if you have a single spouse, then that type of behavior has been considered to be more idealistic compared to having uh, multiple spouse at the same time. Now, the interpretation of the norm you find that within the society changes because the religious practice changes here. Okay. And therefore, it also uh, means that uh, you know, the idealistic concept of adjustment, although it is socially oriented, but it is culturally limited. Okay. So, social, uh, no, social constructs gives it an orientation, but certain uh, no, cultural barriers, they restrict it and say that fine it is allowed and it can be extended to this community, but not to that community. Now, uh, you remember the Hindu Marriage Act, the slide there when uh, certain words were uh, no, uh, colored red. Uh, those were the unsoundness of mind, mental disorder and insanity. Okay. Now, even in the legal framework, you find that certain things which are of clinical relevance, of psychological relevance, they become prominent. Okay. But the act itself, you know, uh, uh, somewhere does not keep on, you know, classifying all types of mental disorders, all types of insanity. Okay. Now, although uh, they also refer to medical taxonomy, like unsoundness of mind, mental disorder, insanity, these are medical taxonomies, okay. they can be interpreted as social categorization of disorder, what is sane and what is not, okay, will depend on uh, whether society accepts that type of a behavior or not. Okay. And if one fails to infer to the behavior as abnormal or subnormal, then the behavior would, uh, by default becomes normal. So, this is uh, you know, another way of looking at it that you search only for abnormal behavior and you come up to the level of subnormality and when you realize that the behavior is neither abnormal nor subnormal, then by default you consider this behavior to be normal. We will take certain examples here. Okay. Uh, the top example where you see a Bharat Natyam performer, okay. although she is equipped with both the lower limbs. Okay as a part of uh, no, an artistic expression, she rests her body weight on one feet and extends the other one. Okay. Society accepts it. Why? Because there is a dominant viewpoint that find this is one uh, no, a form of uh, cultural expression, dance is a form of it, Bharat Natyam happens to be one form of uh, dance in India. Okay. And this is one of the steps and therefore, if you know it, fine, you are far better than me because I do not know Bharat Nati. Okay. Go to the other extreme of it, when majority of the people have only two lower limbs, here you have somebody okay, who was born with five uh, lower limbs. Okay. Uh, this is uh, a case from Pakistan, when uh, uh, in a hospital in Karachi, a baby was born with these many mul uh, lower limbs. No? And you realize that there are interesting type of social interpretations. Okay. Come to the uh, lower figure. Okay. Uh, you see uh, image of Sushmita Sen when uh, she became Miss Universe in 1994. Okay. You look at the pretty face okay, and the world admires you. Okay. Come to the other case here. This is a, a photograph from uh, a child in India in Uttar Pradesh. Okay. And here you find know, that the child had uh, two heads okay. and uh, no, two nose, two mouths and again you find that there is a different cultural interpretation of it. Okay. 
the uh, deliberately I have put uh, know that uh, uh, the news item there, which basically describes that when this child was born, the parents took pride uh, in having a child like that. I am sure uh, Sushmita Sen's parents would also have been proud of her performance. Okay. Here although you have a child with uh, no peculiar features, with uh, multiple facial features, the parents take pride saying that a goddess is born in my family. Okay. And all the villagers started pouring in and they offered you know, their uh, prayers to this baby, okay. uh, donated money to uh, the child. Okay. Con and then you are not considered to be a child with uh, certain chromosomal aberrations, but you are considered to be a representation of a Hindu god or goddess. Now these are interesting social uh, constructs. Okay. What I am trying to say is that medically, okay, although you say that this is an abnormality, okay, socially you celebrate it, this is not an abnormality. And if you believe in practice like that, then you admire the whole process, then you admire uh, such type of deformities, you are getting my viewpoint. Uh, I am sure you must be aware of this, uh, government has been uh, know, uh, putting money in uh, this pulse polio immunization program for long okay. and probably one of the um, uh, missions uh, which succeeded in our country like anything and there was too much of effort uh, know, made to uh, make this pulse polio vaccination program uh, successful, this oral drops. Okay. Uh, right from having Amitabh Bachchan, uh, you know, endorsing that Do Boond Zindagi Ke, you remember his popular ad, to uh, know, even people at the grassroots level, even if you are uh, know, uh, traveling in a bus, train, uh, airports, everywhere, everywhere, every, every small single point, you know, it was so micro uh, management was done in a fantastic way that you would have somebody, you know, uh, putting a yellow jacket saying you no know, pulse polio program and they will uh, you know, pro stand there with a, a capsule with uh, these polio drops. Although this entire program was successful, okay, which was uh, to uh, say that here I consider my citizens and I want them to be free of such type of uh, medical problems and then suddenly there are certain small pockets including uh, Uttar Pradesh, there is a small pocket where the villagers rejected accepting this, okay. simply because somebody had spread the rumor which is purely a rumor okay, that this is uh, basically uh, know, uh, a process of limiting your capability of producing offsprings. Okay, you remember there is a government slogan in our country that you should have two kids. Okay. So, although it is all uh, no unscientific, but somebody correlated know that do booth zindagi ke is equivalent to know having only two kids okay. and this goes against our um, cultural practice, this goes against our religious sentiments okay. and it was unbelievable that a group of people accepted this logic. They were a small community and they refused uh, know, administering this pulse polio drop to their children. So although things are for good, you have social rejection, here things requires utmost medical care, it gets socially celebrated, just contrasting examples you can see in your life. I okay. will come to another uh, interesting example. On the left hand side you see uh, mothers serving the armed forces, uh, when she came back to her native country after serving uh, the war in the Middle East, okay, you see her you know, hugging her child on the airport okay, and you can see the emotions of a mother. Okay. Child is so dear to you, although you went to serve your nation, you went abroad, you worked uh, you know, as uh, uniformed service personnel uh, in the uh, Middle East when your country was fighting the war. Okay. You show uh, know, so much of concern, love, care, compassion, everything for your child. You can very closely see the emotions on her face. 
Okay. This is also one way of uh, caring for the child, loving the child. And I will now show you a video which is a weird practice, completely weird practice in terms of loving and caring the child. Uh, there are uh, places in uh, Maharashtra where uh, children are taken to a place of worship. They are taken to the second floor and then they are dropped from there. So, it is a free fall in the air. Uh, the family members they stand on the ground okay, with uh, a bed sheet. Uh, thankfully, most of the child fall in the bed sheet only. Okay, but imagine the level of trauma that these small children must be experiencing. But then you are told that uh, fine this is how God blesses your child and you are convinced. This is surprising. Okay. You would like to see that video? It is absurd, it is absurd, but then it has social acceptance. I will show you that video and then come back. The whole crowd there, the whole community standing there and then the child is being dropped from the rooftop. God has blessed the child. This is the construct of normal behavioral pattern. Okay. So, what uh, we are uh, trying to uh, know understand in this uh, discussion is that is you know uh, there are uh, social categorization of disorders okay uh, which are actually heuristic social artifacts you remember uh, we had referred to uh, murdoch's statement in the past and then uh, he uh, did talk about uh, heuristic social artifacts saying that all uh, disorders that we consider to be disorders are actually social categorizations no and these are heuristic social artifacts and uh, because you see so much of variation in the pattern of behavior, uh, it is very difficult to understand uh, you know, uh, that uh, who deviates and who does not. Because the moment you make little bit of a change and you realize that the whole situation has changed. I will give you a couple of uh, more examples. We talked about uh, you know, uh, the idealistic concept thinking about good and bad. Okay, thinking, thinking about acceptable and not acceptable. A few years back, we had a student here at IIT Kanpur uh, who did her uh, PhD in sociology. Uh, she walked on one of the tribes in Odisha. Okay. Uh, what she did was that uh, uh, she studied the tribe, which basically you know uh, has been isolated from the modern. Uh, Odia community, they live on uh, the highlands, uh, the mountain regions on the topper, uh, top area, no? not on the lower area. Uh, because of <coughs> whatsoever reasons, some of them, they started you know, shifting downwards. And those who started shifting downwards, uh, they got in uh, touch with you know, certain activities. Uh, which otherwise are considered to be not to be practiced activities. For example, uh, say if you steal an object of somebody, okay, from a modern perspective, this is an act of theft and it uh, you know, makes you uh, undergo certain legal process. Now, uh, some of them were uh, arrested for committing such type of uh, behavior, they were sent to prison. Okay. Once they were in prison and they were, because the crime that they had committed was not so severe, therefore their uh, duration of stay in the prison was limited, two years, three years, one year, something like six months and they would come out, which according to them was small duration. But then when they stayed in the prison, they got in touch with other prisoners 
okay, uh, who were actually from the modern world, okay, knew of many other things. So, these uh, you know, uh, prisoners from this tribe, they will learn uh, usage of certain tools and techniques. Okay. For example, plastic combs. If I tell you that plastic comb is an artifact for grooming yourself, okay, for us it is not a news because right from birth we have been looking at you know, uh, combs and I am sure many of you must be carrying combs in your pockets, okay, because you want to groom yourself properly. And especially when uh, these uh, gels were not available, most of the people used to carry uh, combs in their pocket. Now, these uh, uh, people from the tribe, when they reverted back to their community, after they were released from the jail, they would carry small, small things with them, a plastic comb, okay, a ball pen, a hair clip. These are all small, small artifacts, but they would carry and then uh, know their uh, native community will take pride, oh great, you have brought something great to us, okay, I can now groom myself, oh you have brought a mirror, I can see myself. Okay. And gradually what happened, it was realized that the society did not look at the act that made them go to the jail, rather society took pride in the fact, oh he has served six months in the jail and now he has brought these many artifacts. We know the usage of comb because he went to jail. Okay. The act of theft which otherwise uh, no, will be considered to be a prescribed act not to be replicated act, not to be performed act, suddenly has, suddenly makes you socially celebrated. Okay. I will take this example a uh, little later. Uh, there is a village in UP, very close to us, close means few hundred kilometers, where the whole village is into the act of prostitution. Okay. Legally it is banned in our country, socially it is considered to be an immoral act. But then that very village in modern India okay, still has this practice, because they take pride, they say that this is our tradition and on the name of the tradition, you continue with it. And the male members of the family take pride in the fact you know, that see women in my family, they are engaged in this business, this is our traditional business. It is equivalent to being goldsmith for generations, okay. Bus being a business tycoon for generations. And then you, uh, you know, it is very difficult that where do I draw the line even for idealistic concepts, because the moment you, you know, move few kilometers on this side or that side, the norms changes. Hence, it is always suggested that when you are trying to look at the adjustment pattern of an individual, do take the social context into account. You cannot uh, you know, uh, make the person move out of the context and then say that the, whether this behavior is good or not. Uh, I took the example of uh, uh, divorces in our country. No? Uh, I am sure some of you must be aware of this. Uh, there is a increasing concern in our country over Indian women getting married to Indian men who are settled abroad. Uh, usually it is those who have shifted to the US. In certain region of our country, you find a very, very absurd pattern gradually coming in. Two types of patterns I would like to highlight here. <coughs> Family as a unit was given utmost importance in our country and you would find a large number of people uh, who would say that uh, no, they, their career got ruined which they do not uh, care about. Uh, because they did want to stay with their own parents. Parents were older, they wanted to take care of them and therefore, they did not pursue the career which was very bright, which could have led to lots of money, lots of success, but they simply you know did not take it up because they wanted to stay back with the family. I do not know how far it is true, uh, but I am told that uh, uh, in uh, Assam and other uh, nearby uh, region in the northeast, uh, there happened to be a strong practice uh, in earlier years, when uh, they would take up a government job, government of India job, which is an all India transferable uh, positions. No? So, they will take up a job in Assam, the moment they are uh, 
shifted okay they are posted in outside the region okay they will resign okay so you do not care for your job what you care for is that i don't want to be dislocated this is one end of the story the other end of the story where in punjab uh, i won't name the village there is a village which has only elderly people why because all people in the middle age and the younger age they have shifted to canada or to us so the village has very good houses all types of uh, facilities that you can think of but it is a village with no care giver it's all elderly people and you understand no elderly people would have certain type of uh, needs for caring uh, them and many many issues like this this is another extreme of it uh, the whole act of divorce i was saying no that uh, usually the courts in india would uh, recommend you that first you meet a marriage counselor see if uh, no something can be worked out okay so overall the emphasis is that you should retain the you know uh, this tie up of this uh, bond of marriage the weird pattern that has started coming in and it is a, a really cause of uh, cause of concern is few people in and this is uh, true for uh, again a selected region of this country the boy is uh, somewhere in us comes to india marries a girl okay takes hefty dowry okay the girl remains here after marriage the boy goes there and then suddenly one day one of the courts in that country okay sends that uh, no you have been divorced okay now you do not have an option of an appeal because you are you know say for example in a small village in one of the isolated corners in northern india okay you cannot even you don't even have that uh, you know exposure to understand where this court exists in which part of the world so forget about you know going to that court making an appeal but then there are large number of uh, you know such women coming in that very region and therefore it is a cause of concern Uh, that you are uh, wed your parents paid for uh, your marriage and then uh, after 2 3 days you are deserted and one day you realize that you have been legally divorced okay this is again an absurd pattern okay but then what i am trying to say with this example is that there is another part uh, geographical location in this world where you have problem your husband snores fine get separated Uh, i i remember uh, an european country where the rule says that uh, you have to be together for a month after you file a divorce petition you have to be together for a month and after a month you come to the court and say that yes we still want to be separated okay now there are variable type of norms no one country we took the example where uh, no 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 please see if something can be worked out one country we says remain together for one month okay still if you think getting separated fine get it other country where oh she is not here but you want divorce get it go ahead so too liberal to too restricted all types of variations okay the problem comes when you have somebody from culture x moving to culture y okay and then his adjustment is being evaluated okay and uh, i would take one or two examples but if you are interested uh, you can find many such examples in the books of social psychology okay cross cultural psychology and nowadays there is a very interesting branch in psychology it's called cross cultural psychiatry okay where you look at psychiatric issues from cultural view point and then you take diverse culture into account therefore it is called cross cultural psychiatry where you take symptoms of a particular disorder okay and evaluate whether this is a disorder in this culture whether it is a disorder in the other culture and you find there is a gross mismatch and that's very interesting no because as a medical practitioner you take an oath okay that you would be following certain tradition and you would be doing this you would be doing that and uh, you realize that the social context doesn't allow you to do that because the interpretations are different okay i uh, i won't go to psychiatric symptoms but i'll come to some of the socially accepted and celebrated uh, concepts 
uh, take for example, the concept of beauty okay. uh, and usually beauty is associated with women in the human race. Okay. Men are usually not supposed to be beauty or they are largely not at all attractive in terms of appearance, physical appearance minus few. Now, uh, one of the construct of uh, beauty is uh, know that you should have a lip in a particular format. Okay. Now, what it should be that is very difficult to be uh, uh, no suggested, but then no, you should not have a very uh, long or protruding uh, lip. Okay. Now, there is a tribe where not in India, it is abroad, where uh, the construct of beauty is that uh, the more stretched your lower lips are, the more beautiful you are. So, what they do? Uh, just like you uh, know in our country uh, the girl child uh, they have uh, know, uh, know pricking in their nose their ears they put bangles okay these are you no know, just to decorate yourself to look much more appealing in that culture what they do they uh, cut the lower lip here and insert a small ring so as a child when uh, you know your lip is cut and a ring is fixed okay the cells will grow in this direction no so, gradually what will happen, I would not do that, it would look very ugly, okay. but what would happen gradually is that your lower lip will start you not know, taking this shape. And I have seen photograph of uh, the most beautiful women you saw here, 1994 uh, <laughs> Miss Universe, the most beautiful, uh, beautiful women in that tribe okay. and her lower lip was such that a full thali that we use for consuming our food can be fitted into it. And that is the construct of beauty, where your lip comes up to this level. For us, many of us, probably this would be one of the most horrifying type of image. You cannot accept it as beauty at all. But in another culture, it is perfectly okay. It is that this is how beauty has been defined, and this is how people feel attracted towards women know with longer lower lips. In our uh, situation, it would be uh, very, very difficult for the parents to find uh, a match for the girl. It will be difficult for the girl because she will be, you know, listening to multiple comments from uh, colleagues, friends, classmates. Okay, because we do not describe beauty in such formats. Okay, so uh, that's an uh, interesting uh, thing that I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, with this, uh, we come to an end of. Uh, the first module where uh, we basically focused on uh, biomedical model first, then we talked about uh, uh, the deviation okay, uh, from the biomedical model, the need that was felt by the psychologist that uh, behavioral practices needs to be looked differently and uh, not uh, know, uh, completely complying to the biomedical norms. Then we talked about uh, this uh, process of adjustment. And after discussing the process of adjustment, uh, the most important thing perhaps we discussed was that how do we define normality okay. and whether you are adjusted or not that would depend on whether uh, you are considered normal by your society or not. I okay. will uh, leave you with couple of examples. Uh, so, uh, next week when we meet, we would start with a fresh module, we would be talking about the dimensions of subjective adjustment. But today I would leave you with a few interesting things, uh, so that you can start thinking now. Uh, look at certain uh, uh, know, uh, types of uh, behavior that you see people usually following. For example, you know, uh, putting pen in your uh, know, mouth and then chewing it at times, uh, biting nails on certain occasions. Okay, cutting your own lips, cutting your own lips at certain occasions, uh, uh, say pulling your locks multiple times, okay. uh, refreshing your mail multiple times. I am sure many of you must have seen or probably you yourself do it, no? that every 2 3 minutes you refresh your mail as if as if the world is looking at you, how many mails do you receive in a day. Okay. 
people who are uh, no uh, impulsive in terms of replying to the mail okay that you read the mail and by the time you come to the last word you click reply and you type you don't allow yourself the time to think or people who are fond of clicking not on reply but reply all and you don't know uh, who all were there you know who uh, this mail was addressed to what you ensure is that my mail will always have reply all i know somebody as an individual uh, his mail used to have a disclaimer that the content of this mail you know he has the copyright over it uh, okay and happened to be a well established man i must tell you i can't name him can't say uh, where he is what he is but of course one of the successful men okay in one of the good places okay and uh, i have seen his mails know where you uh, know you have the disclaimer saying that the author has copyright over the content of the mail and most of the times his mails used to be obnoxious no? he would write all types of weird things and claim that this is my copyright things no uh, why i am taking such examples are that uh, when you look from a clinical perspective you realize that such type of behavior needs certain type of moderations you need certain type of attentions by specialists okay who will help you overcome this type of uh, behavioral concerns no but then such things are you know so gladly accepted by a larger chunk of the society okay that you do not find anything wrong in it